Good morning, Mount Zion. It's good to be here with all of you today. I'm thankful that we can have this time to hopefully step away from everything that has been going on and, and be recenter in God's love and truth. So we want to welcome you to this worship service. And as we do every Sunday morning before uh, we begin, I want to invite any of you who may have an announcement to share with the congregation to use this time uh, to share with us what we need to be reminded of. So if you're one of them, please, this is your opportunity to share with us any announcements. Okay. I'm looking through my screen to make sure. Oh, Betty, Betty. Yeah, look, good morning, good morning. I just wanted to say, most of you know that we do a chair class, um, a chair exercise class on Wednesday mornings. There is a link on the website that will get you to that um, class. It's 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Um, and it's a good idea for everyone to consider their physical fitness. And that's why I'm making this plug this morning. It's a brand new year. We talk about physical um, fitness goals and things to do to reach those goals. And uh, it, is, it takes place completely in a chair. You'd be surprised what you can do in a chair. You can really get your heart rate up in a chair, okay? So uh, I just wanted to offer that out. We will be doing it pretty much every Wednesday unless something happens to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. Okay. Um, I hope that you got the e-pointer this week too. Um, if not, I wanna remind you that this morning we are going to be doing a renewal of baptism uh, moment. And so if you are able to get, you know, uh, a bowl with water in front of you and we would really appreciate it because at some point we're gonna use that to remember a baptism together today uh, on this Sunday. So. Seeing that we don't have any other announcements, I'm gonna invite you to take a deep breath with me. A big, big deep breath this morning. I think we all need it. And as we take in that air, the Holy Spirit in our lives, we exhale the peace and goodness that God is filling us with at this moment. And may you be reminded that this is a sacred time, a sacred space, a holy moment where you do not have to worry about anything. For believe it or not, God is in full control of everything. Let us begin worship together this morning. I'm gonna invite you to join me in the call to worship. From the waters of creation, the earth sprang forth. From the waters of a womb, God's blessed son was given to us. From the waters of a river, people were baptized and made, marked as God's children. Praise be to God, whose loving gifts and presence have called us together. Let us shout our love to God for God's abundant love. Amen. Amen. I sing the almighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord, who filled the earth with food, who formed the creatures through the word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, 
Morning. I am uh, Steve Dennis, your lay leader. I'm here to discuss the uh, sharing of joys and concerns this morning. I hope everyone's doing well. We give thanks to God for bringing us together in worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We give thanks for the many wonderful and good things that God is doing at Mount Zion, and we celebrate our ministry and mission leaders who continue to do good work. We continue to celebrate graduations, birthdays, anniversaries, and other milestone events. And uh, just as a heads up, Pam and Jim Aaron Freed will have their 34th wedding anniversary tomorrow. While we celebrate innovations that are leading to vaccines and treatments for COVID-19, we continue to play, pray for strength and healing of those who are affected by the virus. We're praying for Alyssa Sanders uh, as Larissa's mother-in-law. Uh, we're praying for Carol Messerly's sister, Beth, and her husband, Mike Varney for Joan Morrill's cousin, Joe Laco and family, and her friends, Franny and Bill, and for Jenny Morrow's friend, sister, Sandra, who are directly affected by the virus. We pray for the health and safety of those who are continuing to provide medical and other support to our community during this time. And we're praying that God intervene and provide peace and encouragement for those who are homebound, for free to young blood, and for those who are alone and feel alone and experiencing anxiety as a result of the virus and the shutdowns and quarantines and other life events. We pray for discernment and peace for those who struggle to operate and work in our businesses and that God establish the work of our many qualified hands in his service. We pray for patience, support and strength for our students, families and educators who are just getting started with a variety of training programs in the new year. We pray for justice and peace for those who are impacted by violence, racism, and other injustices in this world. And we pray for the uniting of God's people, especially in this great country for the new year. We continue to pray for God's healing for Suzanne Green, for Charlotte Powers and her caretaker Rick, for Joan Morrill and Chuck Plant, Dave Sealing, Connie Gall, Jack Maloney, Don Kraft, Jean Solomon, Lenore Holt, Francis Entzminger, George Bickerton, Gary Hicks, Charlene Fitzpatrick, Marion Isley, Lisa Saylor, Frank Ziegler, Stephen Harrison, Bill Jensen, Chet Kowalik, Cindy Hobbs, and Loretta Howe. We're also continuing to pray for strength and healing of those who are awaiting treatments or diagnoses or recovery from cancer, including Mark Coffin's friend, Joe Pacifico, for Joe Laco's daughter, for Gary Hicks, Ginny Morrow's Melissa, friend, Melissa B, Salman's family, three siblings, Laura Eigel's mom, Cindy, Donna Ray's friend, Nancy, Kathy McLaughlin's son-in-law's co-worker, Jennifer, uh, and cousin Jean Mercado, for Al Hill's supervisor Norm, and for Lindsay Cohen. Daniel, these and many other joys and concerns we raise aloud in our homes and silently in our hearts this day. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to ask you to join me together in prayer. God, we are thankful for this time, for this time of reconnection and renewal and just simply to be reminded of the love that of your love that surrounds us all the time 
And we, as we come every week, we have heard the prayers and the needs, the circumstances. And we just ask that in all of them, those that were shared out loud and those that we kept in our hearts, that your Holy Spirit may come and bring healing and, and grace and forgiveness and strength and courage, and that your love in a very special way may come to all of these circumstances and lives, that they may know that, again, no matter how hard and how difficult life might be right this minute, that they are not walking this journey by themselves. So we are thankful then that we, we are reminded of that love this morning. And we also come before you, God, with um, heavy hearts in many ways for what has transpired this week in our nation. And God, today we ask that in a very clear way, you may remind us that all of us have been created in your own image and that through the love of your son, we are all redeemed. We ask in a very special way that at this time, you will look with compassion on the whole of the human family. A human family, we're a human family, no matter what our political preferences or parties or disagreements might be, we are part of your human family. We pray that you will take away from us the arrogance and hatred which at times infects our hearts. We pray, God, in a special way right now that you will break down the walls that separate us. We ask that you will help us unite us in the bonds of your love and that we will work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish, accomplish your, your purpose on this earth. Your love, your will may be done through us even in this time of struggle and confusion. That in your perfect will, in your good time, all the people, all the nations, and even all the races may come to serve you in harmony. And all of us acknowledge that you are the king, that you are our God, that you are our Lord. God, we are reminded that in your beautiful kingdom that you came to establish, no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness. No strength is known, but the strength of love. So we pray that you will give us the courage to spread this good news, this love, this grace with the people around us today and in our nation, that they may come to know your love, that we may come to remember that we follow the Prince of Peace, that we are members of just one family and that we are all doing our best to be obedient and faithful to your love. So pray, we pray, for grace and for forgiveness and for understanding that you are in control of everything that is happening. We are thankful once again for your love that is bonding us this morning. May we continue to grow. May we continue to embrace the light that you're given us. May we, may we continue to reflect your love so that people may see in us that you are in us. We end this time of prayer as we come together and share this, this prayer that you taught your disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, in, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're gonna take now a time to share our offering and with gratitude, with generosity, we come before God to give the blessings that we have received. Let us be generous.
Let us pray as we receive these offerings. We are thankful, God, once again for your love and grace and generosity. We give you these gifts as a sign of our love and commitment to you and also as a sign of hope that we believe that you're continuing to work and to use all these tools, this money, to make your kingdom known in, on this earth. So we pray, bless this money and multiply it so that more people in this community and around the world may come to know your love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. The first scripture this morning is from Genesis chapter one, which is the first creation story that's in the Bible. And this one is the more poetic of the one, those and begins with in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, 
the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. The gospel lesson comes from the book of Mark. And Mark, other than, unlike the other gospels, Mark jumps straight into the ministry. He doesn't deal with any of the preamble of the birth and all that and setting up Jesus's bona fides for being in his position. He just jumps right straight into the ministry. So here we are in the fourth chapter fourth verse of the book and already we're dealing with John. So here's uh, the gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with, clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, friends, and thank you so much for joining me today. Is it a little bit hard to see me? Well, don't worry, we're going to take care of that. First, we're going to talk about one of our Bible stories today, and that was the first day of creation. On the first day of creation, there was darkness in the world, and God said, let there be light, and light appeared. So the difference between the darkness and the light is like sitting in a dark room with a Christmas tree that doesn't have the lights on, and then now you have the light and the Christmas tree lights, and it's very beautiful. And that's the world God created for us. He wanted us to live in a beautiful world. This light, though, was not the light of the sun. The sun wasn't created until the fourth day. This was God's light, and he put it in this world just for us. Without God, the world was in darkness. And this isn't just physical darkness. And physical means the things that you can see and the things that you can touch. This was spiritual darkness, too, and that means what's in your heart towards other people, your feelings towards God. And that brings us to our second story about Jesus being baptized. So we have to ask ourselves, what is baptism? Baptism is a way for someone to tell the world how much they love Jesus and how they've decided to follow Jesus. Baptism is a newness of life because it makes you into a new person and a different kind of person. Uh, it's, it's a sweet reminder of God's love for us because when we're baptized, it's like God puts his light inside of us. And it shows us that he's willing to give us this new life. So when God created light, he knew that we would be able to see the beauty that he put into the world, the mountains and the trees and the animals. And when we're baptized, that's the time that people can see the beauty that Jesus puts into us when we believe in him. So remember, friends, remember God's light. Remember that you're loved, and have a wonderful Sunday morning. I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, God, our rock and our redeemer. 
We have gathered this morning, God, hoping to hear a word of hope, a word of direction, a word of comfort, a word of love that may allow us to live in the light that you have called us to receive. So we pray that this morning you will speak to all of us here and that your Holy Spirit may have your way in me and in us. Speak to us this morning. In Christ's name we all pray. Amen. Let me just uh, begin by expressing a word of gratitude to all the people who this week had to make um, adjustments and changes uh, for the worship plans that we had uh, originally for this week. Um, I had originally planned to begin with all of you a new sermon series on resilience. Um, but after the events of Wednesday, I found myself in a place where I couldn't do that. Not that we do not need to hear a word of resilience, but I do believe that there are times in our lives when we need to pay attention to, I guess, the voice of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit calling us in a different direction. And so here we are this morning. Um, since Wednesday, on a personal note, it's been very challenging to write and to think what to share with all of you, because to be quite honest with you, um, at, at some point, and even maybe right now, I don't know what I need to tell you. Uh, being a pastor of a faith community where uh, we are thankfully diverse in the ways we understand life, uh, trying to bring a word that will touch all of us when we have different perspectives about what just happened on Wednesday, it's certainly a challenge. And yet, uh, we continue to be invited to this place where God is calling us always to a higher standard, to a higher calling, to a higher ground. And so this morning, uh, as plans were switched, I find myself following the lectionary, something that I don't do very much. And as I'm uh, following the lectionary, which is this collection of scriptures that forms a liturgical calendar, we are in the midst of the season of Epiphany last week, where hopefully you remember that last week, we remember the coming of the light of God into the lives of the Magi, we remember how the Magi came from the East to visit Jesus. And in their pilgrimage, they offered gifts. They came to meet uh, the Messiah, the Son of God. Uh, and as they were understanding, uh, not only the following of a star to, to meet just any other king or just any other potential politician, they find themselves again meeting the Son of God, and that moment in which they received the light became also a moment when their lives were changed completely. The scripture tells us that after visiting Jesus, God told them to go home, back home, in a different way. They realized that the conversations that they have had with King Herod at a time when they were searching for guidance to find this new king, they began to understand that that conversation was a conversation that was actually very dangerous, where there was once again um, a clash between political structures and the empire and the light of love that God was bringing in Jesus and how in the birth of this baby Jesus, uh, king Herod, the empire, the king, was being threatened. And it is in that threat that violence was unleashed on the people as a few days later, we know and we come to understand that King Herod uh, decided to kill and execute all the babies for the fear of losing his power. This is the context in which Jesus has come to give us light. This is the context in which Jesus comes to a world where there it is filled with darkness. And in many ways, we continue to find ourselves in that same place where the light of God has come, 
but still we are surrounded by darkness. And if anything, our nation saw some of that this Wednesday. Um, we continue then to ponder the question, the challenge that the Magi received last week as they were invited to go a different way. And I guess the invitation for all of us this morning continues to be the same, that maybe we came to understand the world in a certain way. Maybe we came to understand the world with a certain political perspective and persuasion. And yet God is calling all of us, no matter who we are, to go and go in a different way. We cannot go the same way we came once we encounter Jesus, the love of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, we cannot go the same way. So in this morning scripture in the gospel, then we find Jesus a continuation of that same story. That same story where Jesus now in a very public way, in a very outspoken way, now Jesus is not that baby in a manger that we met through Christmas and even last week as the Magi visited him. Now Jesus is a grown man and we find him here in the Gospel of Mark as Jan already told us uh, in this gospel where there is no preamble, there is no fluffiness, if you want to call it that way, but there is just this moment where Mark is wants to get right to the action. And so Jesus comes and appears to us as a grown man who is coming to be baptized by his eccentric cousin, John the Baptist. John the Baptist by now, as you already know, has become a very popular itinerant preacher. He has become, um, in some ways, uh, like the prophets of old, someone who was calling the people to reorient their lives. He was calling them to come back to the ways of God and to repent. In other words, John the Baptist saw a world filled with darkness, and he was inviting the people of Israel to reclaim their identity as people of God. And so in his message, he's, he preached a very simple message blunt but simple repent stop taking advantage of the people around you stop hiding be behind your religious piety and continue to oppress the people stop being nice but not kind to those around you see the injustices that you are committing and repent because god is not happy i'm paraphrasing but this is really the message that john the baptist was preaching and in that context then John began to baptize the people. Baptism for the Jewish people is not the way we understand it for ourselves. Baptism was in many ways a cleansing of that moment, an opportunity to repent in front of the people and to claim at least for that moment that they wanted to live a new life. It was a baptism that had to be repeated. It was a cleansing that had to be done time and time again because as we already know, it's very easy to to sin and to not continue to do the promises or keep the promises that we have made. So it is in that moment then that Jesus steps forward and like the rest of the people, he's coming to be baptized. This caught by surprise to John. This was difficult for John to understand how and why Jesus who was the Messiah was coming to be baptized by John, another human like you and I. And yet in that moment of faithfulness for Jesus and for John, Jesus is baptized. And in the midst of that baptism, something important happens. The skies are open and a word from God comes down. Listen, listen, you are my son. You are the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And it is in this moment that Jesus receive, receives his mission officially beginning his ministry to all of us and to the world. You see, this is the moment when things really change for the people who witnessed that amazing moment and for the rest of us. The mission of Jesus, of the beloved son of God is to proclaim not just in him that he is beloved and loved and cared by God and sent by God to bring good news and healing and love and grace. But the mission of the beloved son of God is to claim within us that same belovedness that we have lost. It is the mission of Jesus to take us back, to recover 
the Imago Dei, the image of God that has been tainted, that has been lost for the sin and the many things that we have done to obscure the goodness that God has given us in our hearts. In other words, Jesus' mission is to reclaim in us the belovedness and the light that God has placed in all of us that has been lost. Jesus is receiving this calling to remind each and every one of us that we are worth it and we are secure in God's love, that we don't have to do a be certain thing or certain person in order to be worthy of the love of God, that we do not have to live with the shame and guilt of the past or the violence and hatred that we have accumulated in our heart as a way we relate with, by our, with ourselves and with each other. This is the moment when Jesus changes everything for all of us. Because once again, the beloved Son of God is coming to reclaim our image, our persona of belovedness that is within us, no matter what we have been doing or who we think we are. You see, as Jesus is baptized, his ministry begins. But as we see this, we begin to see then a very different type of ministry from the others, from the other maybe potentially uh, popular preachers or rabbis of the time. What we see in Jesus is this capability, this uh, mission, this calling to embrace people of all sorts. He is the one who comes and begins to, to share a meal with the sinners. He's invited to, to share the bread and the, and the table with those who, who, from the perspective of many, were um, unworthy and rejected and below. Jesus, we begin to see in him this capability of healing all the people, not taking into account their nationality, their gender, or their capability to forgive others. We see in Jesus then this ministry where he begins to extend that belovedness to all the people, all the peoples that he touches. This is why he's able then to change the world because he sees as his mission, this invitation to invite us to reclaim the person that created us to be, someone capable of loving, someone capable of forgiving, someone capable of receiving the love of God and be happy and be generous and receive the light of God. This morning, we find ourselves in a place where we need to reclaim that belovedness in ourselves so that that same belovedness that God has given us, we might be able to see it in others. This is a time, this is a calling where we as people of faith cannot continue to live in a place where we have allowed our political persuasions, our social media personas, our posts, our conversations where we continue to demonize the other that is different from us, continue to dehumanize the other who thinks differently from us, and we stop seeing the belovedness in other. This is not also a calling to forget the injustices and the darkness that we are experiencing, the pain that many people are suffering, the pain and the, and the hurt and the violence that many people are suffering. It is a calling for us to embrace a truth, the justice and the love that God has given us to change the world and change ourselves. This morning, God is inviting us in a, very clear, in a very clear way to embrace a new way. And just as we learned that last week, to go in a different way, in the way of Jesus. Jesus taught us that it is possible. Jesus is with us. Jesus is inviting us. Jesus is walking with us today. And it is in this baptism where we are inaugurated not just into the beginning of Jesus's ministry, but is really the inauguration of a new creation. This water that Jesus received is the, is the promise, the possibility of a new creation that yes, you and I can be transformed. You see the baptism that John the Baptist offered to the people was, had to be done constantly over and over again. But in Jesus, his baptism is the promise of the resurrection is a promise of transformation. It's a burying into the water of the old self and becoming a new person, becoming a person of the light, becoming a person who reflects the love of Christ even in the midst of darkness. 
This morning, we are being invited to reconsider our ways, to reconsider our words, to reconsider our perspectives and embrace the perspective and the love and the grace of Christ. This morning, we are invited to be a new creation, not just a patched up creation, not a 70% new creation, not a 20% new creation, but a 100% new creation. You see, this is not a problem of Republicans or Democrats or Trump or Biden. This is not a problem of any of that. This is a problem where we need to renew who we are in Christ so that we might be able to see beyond ourselves. This morning, we are being invited to reclaim by grace, to reclaim by love, by compassion, the love that God has given us. In order for us to go, to go God's way, in order for us to receive that light, in order for us to become a new creation, we have to be honest, we have to be open, we have to really um, open ourselves to the possibility that we need to repent just like John did to the people, this morning we have to be open and be invited to receive that forgiveness. But first, we have to repent, to acknowledge that we don't, do not get it all that every time right, that we're not perfect, that we do not understand the world the way God understands it. And it is in that space that we don't get it right, that we need to open our hearts and our minds to become more like Christ. This morning, we are being invited to become a new creation. This morning, we are being invited to be forgiven and to receive once again the belovedness that is in you so that we might be able to share that belovedness. You see, God wants to tell a different story about you and me, not a story of political parties, not a story of violence and hatred, but a story of Christ's goodness in us. We are being invited to receive it today, to reclaim it, to embrace it, and to live it today and share that light that God has given us. Today, I want to invite you, and I know these are not ideal circumstances. These are not the perfect circumstances, but this morning, I want to invite you with me. We're going to pause to, to, to renew our baptism. We're going to have a moment to recommit ourselves to that invitation, to, to, to the forgiveness, to, to the new creation, to the new beginning, to receive that water that is cleansing us, but that water that is also inviting us to have a new life. So this morning, we are gonna do this in this way, in a way where we're gonna remember this baptism as an invitation to receive that water of life. So I hope that you have in front of you some water as we are gonna have a chance to, to remember our baptisms. And before that, I, I wanna ask you the same questions that I would ask uh, if you were being baptized as a way for us to reclaim that truth, to reclaim that identity as people of faith. So this is my first question to you as we together, 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 remember and affirm our baptismal vows. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? We do. This water, like the water you have in front of you, comes to represent a covenant. It also comes to represent new life. It comes to represent the possibility that you today, right now, you are a new creation. It comes to represent your belovedness, that you are good, 
that God loves you no matter what, that the light is already within you, that you are loved, that you are forgiven, that you are accepted, and that our calling is to go into the world and to proclaim this same message, that God lo God's love continues to be extended, shared with all the world, no matter who they are. It is an invitation to reclaim the possibility that God is doing a new thing within us, around us, and in our nation. It is our calling to be made whole. So I'm gonna ask you to touch the water, touch the water with your hands and remember your baptism, baptism and be faithful. And as you're touching this water, and if you, if you can touch the water and, and, and on your forehead, and if you are with somebody else, do a sign of the cross on your forehead and do it to the other person that is there within you, with you, and tell them, remember, you are the beloved. Remember, you are the beloved, and I am pleased with you. Remember, you are the beloved, and I am pleased with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm gonna invite you to prepare to receive the benediction. Go into the world today and begin by doing no harm, do good and stay in love with God. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you today and forever, amen.